So, I'm not going to call on people. I don't feel. I have to talk way more when I call on people. <clears throat> um, so we've already talked about continuity a little bit, but we haven't gone into a lot of the details of it. And so that, that's kind of what section six is. Friday was intended, so what I, what I kind of told you guys on Friday was you had the hour to finish up 1.5, to work on it, to ask questions. And so that's kind of why I'm not taking time here at the beginning to answer questions on 1.5, because that was intended to be Friday, or the, like the last three days of last week, right? <clears throat> and um, and we're, not, we're not behind or you know, anything like that either. So I know my original s schedule, it looks like we're off slightly, but we're, we're at the exact same spot as Mr. Topher's classes, so we're doing okay. Um, so in general, continuity, most people think of something as being continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pencil. Now, we've already talked about discontinuities a little bit. Like, we've, we've talked about how um, a whole is considered a discontinuity and then a vertical asymptote. So those, those are where our function is discontinuous. And that's kind of all mixed together here. <clears throat> so I guess we should start with this. The, the big thing is this definition of continuity. <coughs> so if you are asked to verify or prove if something is continuous, the first thing that has to be done, whoa, that's way too big. What is that? Let's try that. Sure. So first thing is that for something to be continuous, it has to exist there. So if I ask you to check if something is continuous at x equals 2, well then to start with, I need to check and verify that f of 2 exists. <clears throat> oh, that reminds me. We'll go over the quizzes um, at, after the notes, towards the end of the hour. So these first two, I don't know if they seem obvious to you or if they just seem stupid, I don't know. Um, but, but what these are actually saying, so f of c, we've talked a whole bunch about how f of c means it's the point right there. You go to x equals c, you look above it, you find it. That's f of c. The limit of f of x as x approaches to c would mean the fact that it says exists means that it's guaranteed to have an answer on both sides that are the same. So if a limit doesn't exist, well then, then that could be from a bunch of different reasons. Could be that one of the two sides is different than each other. Um, it could be one side's not even there. But if it says the limit exists, that guarantees that you're going to have an answer on both sides. And then the third thing, which is easily overlooked, is that they're the same as each other. So 
So here I'll kind of draw my perspective on continuity. There are three parts to continuity. <clears throat> F of C is that spot. It's the middle. The limit as X approaches C is the left and the right hand side, so these two arrows. If they're equal to each other, that means they're all at the same height. So being continuous means that you're coming into a spot, you reach the spot, and then you're going out of a spot. And the only way you can prove that is with the function value and the limit values. And this, this may seem like overkill, and this may seem like, like literally nothing for yet at all yet. <clears throat> a good majority of our derivative and integral theorems and formulas and workings are actually all dependent on something being continuous. So we're going to have to talk about continuity a whole bunch of times this year. <clears throat> and that's why they're, that's why they make a big deal about this like idea. <clears throat> it, it, it doesn't seem like it says much at all. It basically just means that it's there, like you can draw it. But it ends up being a big deal. Um, you will only ever be asked to prove if something is continuous at a location. You're not going to have to say something's continuous everywhere. You'll be asked about specific spots. And that's why we have this definition. Well, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions on that? Maybe you have zero idea what I'm even talking about yet. It's a good start for Monday. Okay. <clears throat> How about down here? If I were to ask you to fill all of this out, do you feel like you'd be able to? We're not going to take the time to do it, I don't think, unless we should. I definitely had a lot less confident answers than I was expecting. Should we go through some of these? All right. <clears throat> Le... Not four. Zero on there? Let's do zero. Although zero might be the only continuous one. Whatever. Let's do zero. So at x equals zero. Oh, this doesn't work very good. I, you're right. I should pick nine because, uh, <laughs> because I can see the picture at the same time. <laughs> okay, so x equals nine. Find the function value if it exists for the given x value. Well, f of 9 would, me, would mean me looking directly above x equals 9. And I, OK, they put the point in between 3 and 4. That's horrible. Oh, yeah, it says 3.5 on the answer key. OK, we'll just go with 3.5. That's cruel. That's just a really cruel way. I'm sick, and it's Monday. We shouldn't be doing this. In between three and four is cruel. <clears throat> okay, find the left-hand limit as x approaches c minus. So that means on the left-hand side of x equals 9. So here, let's color coordinate. On the left-hand side, coming in from the left, it is also at a height of 3.5. From the right-hand side, well, there's nothing. There's nothing on the right-hand side. Doesn't exist. Actually, you know what? I don't like that. Let's not do D and E. Let's look fancier. Well, you guys can write D and E. I just want to feel fancy. It doesn't exist. It's just a backwards E with a line through it. I mean, it's, it's not like complicated. It just looks, it makes it feel way more important. If you write D and E, that makes it feel less important. <clears throat> Find the general limit. 
Well, the general limit is the two-sided limit. Because both of these answers are different, there is not a two-sided limit. Actually, let me erase that. No, it's no limit. I don't know, they're really particular about terms. Is f of x continuous at x equals c? No. Now, the two locations that you should be paying attention to. This first box is the function value. This one, two, three, fourth box is the limit value. If these two boxes have the same answer, then the con continuity is a yes. If these two boxes have different answers, then it's a no. That's basically the definition up here. Number one, f of c exists. Well, that's the first pink highlighted one. Number two, the limit exists. Well, that's the second pink one. And in this case, it didn't. So automatically no. But either way, they have to be the same answer. If I remember correctly, only one of these only one of these is a yes for continuity. <clears throat> if I look, if I look at this graph, I can identify places where it's not continuous pretty easily. It is not continuous right here at x equals negative 5 because there's a jump between the two pieces. It is not continuous at x equals negative 3 because there's a hole and there's a function value way down here. It is not continuous in between there, which should be obvious, but whatever. There's a gap. <clears throat> I, I know the question is going to come from the fact that there is nothing on the left-hand side of 4, but on the right-hand side of 4, it goes up to infinity. So I'm, I'm sure that's where it's coming from. But my guess is you guys are pretty good at identifying where things aren't continuous. Basically, if it's a straight, smooth, normal line, it's continuous. How do I get to the next page? Oh, yeah, scroll down. <coughs> mm, sorry. So this was the portion that was on that review from, boy, that seems like, that's like a week ago, but it seems like it was, well, it was only one section ago, but we did the review last Monday. If you remember on that review, there was these terms, and I told you to skip them. It asked you to identify discontinuities which you guys were able to do at the time because we were talking about holes and vertical asymptotes. And you can identify holes and vertical asymptotes in an equation because of if a factor cancels, that's a hole. If a factor remains in the denominator, that's a vertical asymptote. What we hadn't talked about was what they were classified as. A hole is called a removable discontinuity. A vertical asymptote is the most common type, but that's called a non-removable discontinuity. So here's how I keep them straight. Removable is named to that because a single point was removed. So that's what a hole is. A hole is when you have a single point removed. So if you could put a single point back in to make it continuous, that's called a removable con uh, discontinuity. Non-removable is when there's a gap or jump between them. <clears throat> now this sheet classifies them differently, sort, I mean sort of. 
A jump does discontinuity usually only happens on a piece function. But otherwise, vertical asymptotes is by far just the most common thing. I thought we should do this one down here because I didn't know if you guys would need to know how to write this or not. So we're going to write where this function is continuous, which is usually worse. And then after we write where it's continuous, we're going to identify any discontinuities. Okay, so this one does not have arrowheads at the end, where a lot of the graphs do. And I only know that because here in the problem it said so. So my graph actually starts at negative 5. So this is continuous from negative 5 up to negative 3. And that's because I have a hole at x equals negative 3. So this is the first x value where it breaks. And then I'm just moving on, and this point being there, it's OK that it's a different slope. It's still continuous. It's still continuous until I get to a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So I'm going to have another section that goes from negative 3 up to 3. Would it, would it help if I kind of like tried to highlight this to, I don't know. Color coordinated. <clears throat> My next section is right here. So I'm going to start at negative 3, and then it actually stops. Excuse me, I said negative 3. I'm going to start at 3, and then it actually stops right away at 5. I'm kind of running out of highlighter colors here. So I'm going to have another section from 3 to 5. And then another section from 5 to 7. This is a super annoying graph. And then another section from 7 to 10. <clears throat> I definitely don't have that many colors. Oh, the orange. Can I do an orange one? Sure. Questions on, on how I write this? This one by far is, it's, it's an example of all the different types that can happen. Normally, you will never have a function with this many pieces. I mean, this one is a specific example to show you what to do. Normally, you would have two, maybe three pieces. <clears throat> okay, so these are the intervals of continuity. Discontinuities Excuse me, I'm trying not to sneeze. <laughs> not only that, I'd be magnifying it. Okay, our first discontinuity was at x equals negative 3. It is a removable. And that's because a single point was removed. My next discontinuity was at positive 3. And this is a vertical asymptote because both pieces go up to infinity. So that's going to be called a non-removable. There's a lot of sniffing going on now in all, the, all hours. <clears throat> um, I have
have a hole at five. It, maybe I should point this out. It doesn't matter that negative three has this point above it. This doesn't, this doesn't affect whether something's called removable or non-removable or anything. It's, it's still called a discontinuity because there's a hole there. It doesn't matter that it has a function value up here. Um, this hole is classified identical to this. Whatever, I circled the wrong thing. This hole is classified the same as this hole. And then our last discontinuity is at 7. That would be a non-removable because there's a gap between the two pieces. It's not a vertical asymptote. It's just a gap. Why is it non-removable? <clears throat> because there's a, a, just because there's a hole, like a big space between the two pieces. So if it's a hole, that's the only thing that can be removable. Everything else is called non-removable. Let's clean up this. <laughs> so the quick answer is because at negative three, there's a limit value. Basically, the graph is right before and right after. And so the only thing missing right here is just that single hole, where at seven, the limit before and after is very different. So this space between them automatically is non removable. Oop, that's not an eraser. Click on it. Click on it. There we go. <clears throat> Anything else that's come to your mind yet? Okay. I'm going to skip all of these facts because you guys can read perfectly well on your own. Uh, let's go to example 4A. And let's see, what time do we get done? 30? Um, <coughs> uh, I'm not sure how much time we need for a quiz. Do you feel like we need a lot of time for the quiz? Oh, do you want me to just quit here? We didn't, but okay. <clears throat> That's fine. Um, so if you guys want, I mean, this is going to be the same as before where, as, as far as I know, we'll probably just keep assigning the, the homework directly after each section as the homework. So if you guys ever want to, that's why I haven't been writing anything on the board because the homework is just like in the packet. Um, Absolutely, you should probably be able to do probably the first half or a third of the homework if you wanted to get a head start on it. Otherwise, we'll probably finish just the rest of it tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, let's go over the quiz. <clears throat> 